The Ford Maverick has been a true revelation to the world of pickup trucks. With its compact size, unibody chassis, enormous practicality, and extremely low price, it's not hard to see why it was and still is considered the most popular vehicle in the US. However, even with such grand virtues behind it, the Maverick has a few glaring issues that keep on drawing potential buyers away and frustrating those who already own them. In today's video, we'll be checking out what drags this otherwise great car down as we take a look at 5 things Ford Maverick got wrong. Number 5. Incredibly low interior quality Before we say anything else, we know that the Maverick is a cheap truck. We don't expect it to have luxurious materials or interior design and quality that's equal to a Rolls Royce. However, it should have been better than this. A vehicle in 2024 with no soft touch materials is simply not excusable, no matter the price. And the fact that the Maverick uses the cheapest possible plastic all across the cabin is very saddening, as most of the interior starts creaking and rattling much earlier than anticipated. Honestly, we could have understood that Ford wanted to make it more rugged by not using soft touch materials. However, they should have at least made them from more resilient plastic and not that cheap and flimsy one we see. Let's not also forget about the seats, which on some models managed to crease in the first thousand miles. And while they are decently comfortable, the fact that they have little to no profiling makes them quite mediocre in the bends. Plus, the lack of higher quality material options, such as leather, makes them even less appealing. And let's not forget to mention that the fitment of all the stuff was also horrifying with panel gaps and a general lack of attention to detail certainly leaves a very bitter taste in our mouth. This is especially present in the early model years, as Ford was under immense pressure to pump out as much Mavericks as they could. Everything feels so haphazardly fitted together that it looks like Ford didn't even try to mask their production line problems. In our opinion, Ford cheapened out where they shouldn't have, and let's expect the expected facelift Maverick to be better than the current one in this regard. Number 4. The reliability is not the best Another very unfortunate issue with the Maverick is that its powertrains most certainly aren't the best when it comes down to reliability. The 2.0 EcoBoost is a solid unit, and we can't really complain about it. However, the 2.5 Hybrid just leaves a lot to be desired. We're sorry to say that despite its many virtues, it simply isn't good enough for us to recommend. Since the Maverick was released, the 2.5 has been recalled a whopping five times because of issues that were directly related to the powertrain itself. The most well-known issue was the issue with gas and oil fumes entering the hot ignition source, such as the exhaust and start a fire. This made the Ford Maverick gain the reputation of the Ford Pinto, a car that is very similar from the idea standpoint to it. The Pinto was already very cheap and popular with Americans. However, it had a tendency to also go up in flames during rear-end collisions. But unlike with it, Ford actually tried to neutralize the issue on the Maverick. However, even when this issue was initially deemed as sorted out, however, it resurfaced once again last year and Ford had to recall a lot of models again. The root of this issue was the sheer lack of quality control of the engine, which is just defeating for those of us that are fans of the Blue Oval and you most definitely don't want to fire on a vehicle that has a massive lithium-ion battery, as that would severely increase the hazardness of the situation. Apart from this, there are also battery and battery heater issues, as well as many other minor ones. Apart from the engines, the peripherals aren't much better either. There were 243,000 units recalled at the beginning of May because of a taillight issue, as they could simply dim out and apart from this, there were also a couple of other minor issues, such as the instrument cluster flashing out and the turn signals malfunctioning. These issues, while not serious individually, leave a very unsatisfactory impression when coupled together. Ford is doing its best to mitigate them and improve the Maverick's reputation. However, the damage to its image has been already done in such a severe measure that we don't believe that they'll be able to fix it. But hey, at least it's cheap, right? Number 3. The Hybrid Still Hasn't Got An AWD Drivetrain It's been three years since the Maverick released, and we're yet to see an AWD version of it. Honestly, 
Ford's choice not to offer an AWD hybrid was extremely confusing to us, as it totally defeats the purpose of a truck. And the fact that the 2.0 does come with AWD as an option only adds salt to the wound. Honestly, this was a missed opportunity through and through, because a Maverick could have benefited massively from having an AWD hybrid. Imagine having a vehicle that is utilitarian, has some off-road potential, and is extremely cheap to run, both in the city, on the highway, and off the road altogether. Not to mention that the hybrid Maverick is extremely heavy, and it would have also massively benefited from AWD on the road too. It would have neutralized the ever-present understeer, as well as adding additional traction that would have helped it with towing and hauling heavier stuff. Now we understand that installing an electric motor at the back of the truck couldn't be done because of the truck bed. However, Ford should have found a solution for this issue through a mechanical AWD, like the system used on the EcoBoost version. All in all, this was a massive mistake on Ford's end, and let's hope that the upcoming redesign will fix this and offer AWD with the hybrid. Number 2. The bed cargo area is very lackluster. Honestly, what made us scratch our heads the most was the fact that the Maverick has such a small truck bed. 33 cubic inches of space is certainly lackluster, especially since the Maverick is not exactly a small truck, despite it being called compact. If we're being completely frank, the bed will be workable for most people. However, it will definitely not suffice if you're looking for a workhorse truck for carrying larger items. You'll have to look elsewhere. Sure, it's better than the Santa Cruz. However, not by much. And frankly, it should have been a game changer in this regard. The Maverick should have offered a regular cab or an extended one, for those of which that would have used it in the same manner as a panel van but Ford decided to skimp out on this. The Ford Maverick seems to have been tailor-made for the old saying, Jack of all trades, a master of none. Honestly, we expected much more from a 17-foot long truck. Number 1. The off-road capabilities are very limited. Despite having AWD on the EcoBoost version, it's rather sad to say that it is very lackluster to say the least. It is, after all, a unibody pickup truck that is based on a crossover SUV. Sure, the AWD helps a lot with understeer, considering how front-heavy it is. However, that's the only thing it helps with. When it comes down to off-roading, the Maverick is only slightly better than a regular road car, as anything but the FX4 trim has relatively low ground clearance, as well as suspension that is only adequate for paved roads. Not to mention that the gearbox doesn't have low gearing, automatic hill descent, or anything that would even remotely help it out when in a jam. Combine this with the fact that tires are low-profile tires and large alloy wheels, and you'll have a recipe for an off-road disaster. Ford should definitely put more thought behind the Maverick's off-road performance, because most people that are buying a pickup truck are doing so because they want an all-purpose vehicle. There should be at least a few more trim levels for it that would be more utilitarian and bash-friendly. However, by the recent leaked footage of the 2025 Maverick Del Lobo, it seems that this won't be the case, and it'll be focusing even more on its on-road capabilities. And don't tell us that they can't because of the unibody chassis, as the new Land Rover Defender also has a unibody chassis, yet it is considered to be the best off-roader in its class. However, even with these issues, the Ford Maverick is still an incredibly impressive vehicle, you simply cannot beat the value for money it provides. As for as little as $25,000, you'll be getting yourself into the deal of the decade. We're just sad they didn't make it just a little bit better, so there was nothing to complain about. As it is, it's so near to perfection that it hurts.